extremely rocky for the Mudville Nine that day. The score stood four to two with but one inning left to play. So when Candy died at second and Burroughs did the same, a pole-like silence fell upon the patrons of the game. A straggling few got up to go, leaving there the rest, with hope that springs eternal from within the human breast. They thought if only Casey could get a whack at that, we put up even money now with Casey at the back. But Flynn preceded Casey, and likewise so did and the former was a pudding, and the latter was a fake. So on that stricken multitude, a death-like silence sat. For there seemed but little chance of Casey getting to the bat. But Flint let go a single to the one great wall, and the much despised Blakely tore the cover off the ball. So when the dust had settled and they saw what had occurred, there was Blakely saving second, and a Flint a Multitude went up a joyous yell. They bounded from the mountaintop and rattled in the dell. It struck upon the hillside and rebounded on the flat. For Casey, mighty Casey, was advancing to the back. Smile of 
noble charity, great Casey's visit shone. He still the rising tolman, and he bade the game go on. He signaled to the pitcher, and once more the spheroid flew. But Casey still ignored him, and the umpire said, strike two. They saw his face grow stern and cold. They saw his muscles stray. And they knew that Casey would not let that ball go by again. The sneer is gone from Casey's lip. His teeth are clenched in hate. He pounds with cruel vengeance, his back upon the plate. And now the pitcher holds the ball, and now he lets it go, and now the air is shattered by the force of Casey's blow. Oh, somewhere on that favored land, the sun is shining bright. The band is playing somewhere, and somewhere hearts are light. And somewhere men are laughing, and somewhere children shoot. But there is no joy in Mudville. Mighty Casey has struck out.